Hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us today here at Camp Common Prayer Day by Day. For the offices that you are just about to uh, partake in. I'd ask that you subscribe to our channel and that you would click on the little bell button there by the subscribe button to get notifications of when I do post the morning or evening prayer. One last favor I would ask is that that you would share us with your friends and those who you think may enjoy this uh, online daily devotional. And maybe we can all become a sort of a church online, a community online. So again, don't forget, subscribe. Okay, bye for now. God bless. Open thou, O Lord, our mouths to praise thy holy name. Cleanse also our hearts from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten our understanding, enkindle our affections, that we may say this office with attention and devotion, and so be meet to be heard in the presence of thy divine majesty. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This morning's service is the service of morning prayer for Tuesday in the seventh week of Trinity. And our service begins on page four of the Book of Common Prayer. And correction. The service begins on page six of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the, the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepare the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O, oh, that you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in that day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The hymn chosen for this morning's service is hymn number two, part one. Hymn number two, part one, with a doxology at the end. Awake, my soul, and with a song, thy daily stage of duty wrong. Shake off those sloth and joyful rhymes to thy morning sacrifice. Redeem thy misspent moments past, and live this day is in thy last. Improve thy talent with due care. For the great day thyself 
appointed for this morning's services, Psalm 86 and 87, 86 and 87, beginning on page 439 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me. For I am poor and needy. Preserve thou my soul, for I am godly. Save thy servant that put this trust in thee. Thou art my God, be merciful unto me, O Lord. For all the day long do I call upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble desires. In the time of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is not one that can do as thou doest. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. O knit my heart unto thee, 
that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and a band of honored men hath sought after my soul, and hath not set thee before their eyes. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn thee then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thy handmaid. Show some token unto me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, hast helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. His foundation is upon the holy hills. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of thee. Thou city of God, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon, as among the, them that know me. Behold Philistia and Tyre and with Ethiopia, lo, this one was born there. Yea, of Zion it shall be said, this one had, and that one were born in her. And the Most High her, himself shall establish her. The Lord shall reckon when he writeth up the peoples. That this one was born there. The singers also and dancers shall say, All my fresh springs are in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the first book of Samuel, Chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. And it came to pass, when Saul was turned from following the Philistines, and it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Gidi, in Gidi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And when he came to the sheep coats by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in and covered his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord saith unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. And then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, 
to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave, and went on his way. David also arose after, afterward, and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked upon him, David stooped with his face to the earth, and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord hath delivered thee to the, today into my hand in the cave. And some bade me to kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee, spared thee, and said, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, ye see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for it, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and kill thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancient wickedness, proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. And whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dwelt well, dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord hath delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will be will he let him go well, well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of thy my father's house. And David swear unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got them up unto the, the, unto the hold. Here endeth the first lesson. Continuing now on the bottom of page 7, with the Dedeum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. 
Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name in a world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Our second lesson is written in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is in Caesarea, that ye may receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in what Soever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a suc succor of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise greet the church that is in the, their house. Salute my well-beloved Epentius, who is the first fruits of Achilia and unto, unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Wania, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Ampelus, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urban, our helper in Christ, and Sictis, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are in Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that he that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Typhenia and Typhrosia, who labor in the Lord. Salute the Persis, which labor much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Acritius, Philion, and Hermes. Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philogius and Guila, Neverus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another in with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and of offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, for their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad upon to all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto which is good and simple concerning evil. 
and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. With you. Amen. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason and Sobithia, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tetrathus, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, salute you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quarterus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wines be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Here endeth the second lesson. Continuing now on page 9 with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of its holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, we are by today spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty, everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same of thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings be ordered by thy governments, that do always have us righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the commonwealth, and all who are sent in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, Send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual joy of light thy blessing. Grant us, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and the holy faith and unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed, in mind, body, or estate. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their suffering and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And thus, this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. That we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to thy servants and by walking before thee, in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.